Innovate faster with MySQL Database Service, the number one open source database in Oracle Cloud. MySQL Database Service is a fully managed database as a service. It is the only database service 100% developed, managed, and supported by the MySQL team. It gives you an easy, secure, and cost-effective way to develop and deploy applications faster, MySQL Database Service brings you the power of MySQL Enterprise Edition with the advanced security of Oracle Gen 2 Cloud. It has great benefits for IT managers, DBAs, and developers. Its key features include 100% developed, managed, and supported by the MySQL team, latest MySQL updates, new features, and security fixes, Proven MySQL Enterprise Edition features the highest reliability, security, and uptime. Advanced database security, including encryption, data masking, firewall, and auditing. Fully managed cloud service with automatic backups, patching, and monitoring. Quick provisioning of high-performance database instances. 100% compatibility with on-premises MySQL deployments. Tight integration with Oracle IaaS and Oracle Pass on Oracle Gen 2 Cloud. These are the key benefits you obtain from MySQL database service. Increase business agility. Deliver outstanding security, performance, and uptime. Get the highest level of MySQL expertise. Easily move workloads to the cloud. Reduce total cost of ownership. Improve productivity of IT talent. Provide a development-ready platform. Leverage fully integrated Oracle technologies. MySQL database service is ideal for development and testing, application lift and shift, hybrid applications, SaaS applications, and new cloud-native applications. And you get unified 24-7 premier support directly from the MySQL and Oracle Cloud experts from a single point of contact. MySQL database service. Easy, secure, enterprise-ready. Run your applications in the cloud globally at scale. To learn more about MySQL database service, visit oracle.com slash MySQL. Want a MySQL database ready for the most demanding applications? Need to be agile and drive innovation for the next generation web, cloud, mobile, and embedded applications? Scaling to millions of online users with five nines uptime and rock bottom total cost of ownership? Achieving peace of mind through built-in high availability, robust security, and regulatory compliance? MySQL Enterprise Edition powers the world's most popular websites. It has a history of handling ever-increasing users, queries, and data loads. Developers gain ease of use, flexibility, agility, and the ability to deploy critical applications with a faster time to market. DBAs care about performance, high availability, and disaster recovery. Chief information officers are concerned about regulatory compliance and security. You shorten time to market. You gain customer satisfaction. You reduce costs. You increase your revenue and profitability. MySQL Enterprise Edition enables organizations to achieve the highest levels of MySQL reliability, security, and uptime. It reduces the risk, cost, and complexity of developing, deploying, and managing business-critical MySQL applications. In addition to superior performance, maximum uptime, and high scalability, it contains the most advanced capabilities for proactive monitoring to maximize uptime and performance, online backup to prevent data loss, replication for continuous business operations, encryption for critical data protection, policy-based auditing for regulatory compliance. With Oracle Premier support for MySQL, you have the industry's most experienced MySQL engineers at your disposal. Get access to 24-7 production support in 29 languages. Benefit from consultative support. File unlimited support incidents. To find out more and deep dive into MySQL Prime features, go to mysql.com or contact your Oracle Value Added Reseller. Innovate faster with MySQL Database Service, the number one open source database in Oracle Cloud. MySQL Database Service is a fully managed database as a service. It is the only database service 100% developed, managed, and supported by the MySQL team. It gives you an easy, secure, and cost-effective way to develop and deploy applications faster. MySQL Database Service brings you the power of MySQL Enterprise Edition with the advanced security of Oracle Gen 2 Cloud. 
it has great benefits for IT managers, DBAs, and developers. Its key features include 100% developed, managed, and supported by the MySQL team, latest MySQL updates, new features, and security fixes, proven MySQL Enterprise Edition features the highest reliability, security, and uptime, advanced database security including encryption, data masking, firewall, and auditing, fully managed cloud service with automatic backups, patching, and monitoring, quick provisioning of high-performance database instances, 100% compatibility with on-premises MySQL deployments, tight integration with Oracle IaaS and Oracle Pass on Oracle Gen2 Cloud. These are the key benefits you obtain from MySQL database service. Increase business agility, deliver outstanding security, performance, and uptime, get the highest level of MySQL expertise, easily move workloads to the cloud, reduce total cost of ownership, improve productivity of IT talent, provide a development-ready platform, leverage fully integrated Oracle technologies. MySQL database service is ideal for development and testing, application lift and shift, hybrid applications, SaaS applications, and new cloud-native applications. And you get unified 24-7 premier support directly from the MySQL and Oracle cloud experts from a single point of contact. MySQL database service, Easy, secure, enterprise ready. Run your applications in the cloud globally at scale. To learn more about MySQL database service, visit oracle.com slash MySQL. Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Shirley Simon and I take care of marketing communications here at Path Infotech. And I will be moderating the webinar today. Uh, just a quick check. I hope my screen is visible to everybody and I'm audible to all of you. In case anybody is facing an issue, just ping us in the chat box on your control panel. Cool. I don't see any messages coming in. So I'm assuming that you guys are good to go on this. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. Your lines will remain muted during this session. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to type them in the question box in your control panels. We'll be having the Q&A round at the end of the session and we'll try and address all your questions at that point of time. Um, so as I was saying, the session is getting recorded. We'll be sharing the link with all of you post the webinar. Uh, the exciting part for today is that we have a raffle draw at the end of the webinar for the participants. We've got three lucky winners who will stand a chance to win an exclusive MySQL discovery session for the organization. Before I move forward and bring in our speakers today, I'd like to introduce you to Path Infotech. Path Infotech is a technology-led business solutions company offering digital transformation, foundational, and sustenance services across industry domains. We bring the right blend of functional knowledge and technology excellence that empowers our customers to embrace automation, cloud, whether you're talking about IaaS, PaaS, or SaaS, mobility, analytics, enterprise applications, and cross-platform integration. Today, we bring to you an exciting session of MySQL. Find out how you can achieve the highest levels of scalability, security, reliability, and uptime with MySQL. I've got a quick poll coming in on your screens right now. I'll ask you, please take a moment to kindly answer the questions. Thank you so much, everybody. Allow me to now welcome our speakers for the webinar today. We have with us Yuan Chong. She is MySQL Cloud Sales Manager at Oracle. 
Yvonne is an experienced business development consultant with a demonstrated history of working in the cloud environment of the IT and the services industry. Hi, Yvonne. Welcome to our webinar today. Thank you so much for joining in. Hello. Thank you, Shelley. Hello, everyone. Uh, good day. And uh, thank you for having me. Uh, looking forward to speak with everyone. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you so much, Yvonne. We also have with us Hanantu. Hanantu is my SQL Principal Solutions Engineer at Oracle with 20 plus years of IT experience. He's an evangelist on MySQL database and container with expertise running MySQL on container driven infrastructures such as Kubernetes, OpenShift, and Oracle Container Engine for Kubernetes. Hi, Anantu. Glad to have you here with us. Thank you, Sergey. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anantu. Good to have you here with us. Our third speaker for today is uh, Lakshman Singh Tomer. He's AVP pre-sales and delivery at Path Infotech. Lakshman has 19 plus years of experience across industry and is responsible for pre-sales, solutioning, and project management. Hi, Lakshman. Welcome to our webinar today. Hey, hi, Shirley. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's session. Good to have you here with us, uh, Lakshman. Now, without much delay, I'd like now to hand out the floor to Yvonne and request her to kindly take the lead from here. Over to you, Yvonne. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Shirley. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, can see my screen, I believe? Yes, please. OK, thank you. Um, all right. Uh, as uh, Shirley introduced, I am uh, representing the MySQL Corp team, and here I am uh, introducing MySQL to all of you. So, without further ado, okay, so today we'll be covering uh, open source, MySQL actually, and uh, you know, enterprise features, and also um, what are some of our, our offerings. So, as everybody knows, um, this is from DB Engine, and uh, it is a, uh, a a source where it, it tells us that um, in the DB world, number one most downloaded database is actually Oracle, and the number one open source database that was downloaded and used is actually MySQL. So in terms of open source, MySQL is ranked number one, and the latest is April 2022, as we can see here. Yeah, and number one is Oracle. And so, okay. so, um, so we can see in the market there is seventy percent or more in, in today's uh, day and age. More than seventy percent are using open source, so open source um, database, and MySQL is one of them. But um, out of this, uh, in this seventy percent, out of this. A uh, whole lot. Ninety-five percent of them says that enterprise features is important. Twenty percent say that it's important. Five percent say that it's somewhat important. Thirty-six percent says that it's very important, and thirty-nine percent say that it's extremely important to have enterprise version of open source. So a little bit of MySQL history. In 1995, MySQL started, and uh, in 2008, Sun acquires MySQL. And in year 2010, Oracle acquired Sun together with MySQL. So in 2010, Oracle officially owns uh, MySQL as a product. And in 2015, um, 5.7 yeah, was uh, released. And in April 2018, 8.0 was released. So um, MySQL, as everybody know, it is very popular, very well used, and over 15 million active installations happening across the world. And uh, we are looking at 65% uh, 65,000 downloads each day. And I'm sure everyone is familiar with LAMP stack and MySQL is the M in the LAMP stack. So MySQL is used across uh, many industries. As we can see, all, all the famous uh, or popular social platform, all the e-commerce, the tech, 
the finances, the manufacturing, and many other uh, are beginning to adopt and started using and developing applications uh, using MySQL. So not just it is popular, but MySQL also power the most complex business in the world. As you can see, you know, we have Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and PayPal. All these are talking about thousands and thousands, even up to millions of transactions in seconds and milliseconds, right? So today, MySQL has the four main flavors, I would say. So um, community edition aside, so we have a standard edition, which is uh, the basic database features plus MySQL support. And of course, we have enterprise edition that comes with all the enterprise features, the security, the tools, the advanced uh, features, binaries, as well as the support, of course. And we have carrier grade edition, which is the in-memory NDB clusters that is widely used in uh, telco as well as government. And the latest uh, we have is our new product, which is the MySQL Oracle Cloud. Um, the MySQL database as a service is 100% fully managed and as well as the Heatwave in-memory analytic engine. So um, this is uh, MySQL for you. And uh, I'll pass the time to my colleague, uh, Hananto, to give an introduction, further introduction on uh, MySQL Enterprise. Thank you. Hey, Hananto, over to you now. Okay, sorry, uh, I was on mute, okay. Uh, so today we have uh, two solution engineers in these uh, presentations, yeah, uh, which is myself, okay, I'm handling uh, Singapore market, and my colleague David Wu, okay, he is handling Malaysia market, and together we would like to um, explain to you about how to elevate your database with Oracle MySQL Enterprise Edition. Uh, would you want to actually recheck your slides because we guys are only able to see a blank screen? Oh, really? Okay. Thank you. Sorry for that. Yep. Good to go. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, Shirley. Okay. So, uh, as my first slide, okay, I would like to present to you the uh, MySQL technology solution landscapes. We are no longer just doing the OLTP, but also we are onboarding the uh, online analytical processing workload as well as machine learning workload to MySQL. As an OLTP, you can install MySQL easily. Yeah, you can use MySQL Enterprise Editions, install it on-prems or on cloud, bring your own license or on cloud native or Kubernetes. MySQL is very good for relational database management systems. Yeah, you can store relational data and play with SQL, okay, to query, insert, update, delete, and so on. And with MySQL 8.0, we have um, MySQL document store uh, that can able to handle semi-unstructured data, okay, using JSON uh, document format, yeah, as if you are playing with uh, no SQL. So MySQL 8.0 is basically SQL plus no SQL. And we have a built-in data replications in MySQL uh, since very long time back. Uh, we support asynchronous replications to replicate data between MySQL database. We support uh, semi-synchronous replications as well as fully synchronous replications. We will talk more about this later on. And MySQL um, can give fast performance. And of course, we have uh, very wide solutions, okay, for high availability and clustering. So, and uh, as part of MySQL 8.0, and MySQL Enterprise Editions, we have end-to-end -end data securities that able to elevate database to be able to deploy into the most stringent security, uh, secure environments and high availability environments. And uh, we bring MySQL Enterprise Edition on cloud as well as a service in OCI. Um, we have MySQL database service in OCI that use MySQL Enterprise Edition, the only one MySQL as a service on cloud that uses MySQL Enterprise Editions. And MySQL Heatwave is the in-memory database query performance on cloud that you can use that. You can use these database platforms 
on MySQL for OLAP or to speed up your query. And it can accelerate your MySQL query performance up to 5,400 times. We assist so many clients, okay, uh, to help them uh, to come to HeatWave and use HeatWave. And we have seen uh, performance Im improvements from 5,000 seconds on single query without any change. Once they use HeatWave, then the same query will be go down to only seven seconds and so on. And we we use our Oracle Auto ML for machine learning query able to run on a MySQL HeatWave. As you see on the screens, we have you know uh, so wide uh, solutions. Okay, for OLTB, OLAP, and machine learning that can be used by you know any kind of applications uh, for customers, for staff, for phone liners, even the business decisions makers, uh, executive as well as uh, data scientists and so on. And uh, this is kind of like uh, give you a little bit deep, deeper okay, outlooks. Uh, what is our solutions all about? On-prems, we have MySQL Enterprise Editions that can run in high availability mode. We have MySQL InnoDB cluster that can give you 99.99% system high availability for generic applications. And if your applications requires you know, low latency and real time performance, we have NDB clusters. It is in-memory database performance that can give you 99.9999% system high availability and very extreme performance because database completely run in memory. And on cloud, we have MySQL database service that can use group replication to provide high availability as well, similar to the InnoDB clusters that you can deploy on-prem or on cloud on top of IS. If you have microservice applications and you want to run data layers together with the microservices applications on Kubernetes, for example, on your cloud native environments, MySQL is the the suitable the choice for you. We have plenty of clients basically running MySQL on containers, running on Kubernetes and so on, serving microservices applications. So we will talk about this later. And if you have unstructured data, movies, pictures, documents, have everything, okay? We have Oracle Lake House. It is a modern data platforms using object storage and data catalogs to collect the data and mine the data based on the catalogs to find out MySQL data and put the data to the MySQL heat wave for analytics and for predictive analytics using machine learning. In terms of TCO, MySQL give very good TCO, very low TCO. You can have 90% TCO saving compared to other proprietary database like Microsoft SQL or Sybase, for example. This is on-prem solutions. How about on cloud solutions? Our MySQL database service or MDS is using MySQL Enterprise Editions. And the cost is only 30% of the cost that you need to pay for other cloud providers that give you MySQL Community Editions as a service. In terms of cost performance benchmark, our MySQL HeatWave can give you the best cost performance benchmarks. Based on 30 terabyte TPCH compared to Google BigQuery, Snowflake AWS, Azure Synapse, AWS Redshift, it can give you more performance, but less cost. The HeatWave can give better cost performance compared to all the competitors that it has. If we talk about specifically about MySQL database editions, basically it is like you know MySQL database plus advanced features plus management tools and plus Oracle support. In terms of advanced features, we have uh, scalability for MySQL. We have high availability solution clustering, yeah, clustering solutions. We have external authentication plugin that enables MySQL to be integrated with external authentication systems like LDAPs, 
Microsoft Active Directory and so on. We have MySQL Enterprise Audit that can, you know, give uh, features for the database administrators to create audit policies, okay, to audit or to trace and to lock all the activity that's required by the auditor yeah, to be monitored. Right? And we also have uh, MySQL Enterprise Encryptions and Transparent Data Encryptions to encrypt the data in the storage as well as on the tables. And if you are you know, looking for the solutions to have database firewalls, for example, if you are using MySQL, you don't have to provide external database firewalls in front of the database because MySQL Enterprise Editions has firewall built in. And you can just install MySQL Enterprise Firewalls uh, as a plugins on top of uh, MySQL Enterprise Editions database instance. And you can create a firewall policies to block unwanted SQL statements. In terms of management tools, we have MySQL Enterprise Monitor to monitor all MySQL Enterprise Edition assets that run in your environment. And it is free, free of course. We have MySQL Enterprise Backup to make sure that your database can be backup and can be restored and meeting recovery point objective and recovery time objective as required by the business. We also have a MySQL Enterprise Workbench that can be used by the developers to develop applications, okay? And uh, I mean, database package, let's say, yeah, for the applications, used by database administrators to, uh, to monitor, to, you know, uh, manage the database, or used by the consultants or the project team to migrate non-MySQL database into MySQL Enterprise Editions. On top of that, we give our customers support, 24 hour, by, 24 hour by seven support, unlimited ticket. As database administrators, the most important things that he needs to ensure is database recoverability. MySQL Enterprise Backup will ensure that, you know, database has a proper backups. This, Backup is not the logical backup, whereby if you are using MySQL Dump, for example, you need to connect to MySQL and MySQL Dumps will, you know, query the tables logically and put the data into the flat files. However, MySQL Enterprise Backup will connect to the database, but does different thing. It is not querying data on the tables, but it will backup byte by byte, yeah? Uh, every page inside the um, database data files that contains data. And it will copy that block or that page into the backup locations. It support full backup, incremental backup and partial backup. And it will give you um, consistent snapshots of database at the point in time. So that, and as well as the information so that you can do a point in time recovery. You can do backup to tape to this, also to OCI object storage. As you see on the screens on the left on the right hand side, the differences in terms of performance during the backup and recovery between MySQL dump in community editions and MySQL enterprise backup in and uh, MySQL enterprise editions is huge, right? During the, uh, when you want to backup 73 gigabyte of data, okay, it takes about four hours. But MySQL uh, Enterprise Backup will only take about five minutes, 5 minutes, 5.25 minutes. It happens because MySQL Enterprise Backup does not need to query the data. You just need to backup the database data files online without interrupting the applications. And in terms of restorations, MySQL Enterprise Backup just copy the data into the data there and setting up yeah, and so that you can start up the database. So easy. Therefore, it will reduce the restoration times. If you use MySQL Dump to restore 73 gigabyte database, it takes about 18 hours. However, for MySQL Bus Backup, it only takes about 14 minutes. And I would like to share with you, okay, how it is being done. Let's say I have new database. I created new database. I started my database, so I have new database 
empty. Then I install circular schema so that I have data to, to be backup, right? So here, here, here is my commands, okay, uh, that I use yeah, uh, to backup my database. Using MySQL backup, user is root, I'm connecting to database at local host and port 3311. Then I specify my backup directory, the directory where I want to put my backup files. Then after that, I will backup my database using backup and apply log to get the consistent snapshots of the entire database at this point in time. So uh, uh, once the backup is created, the backup is also create the metadata. And from the metadata, I will know the build positions as, as well as the TTID executed, so that I can use these information to create a read replica, for example, or to do point in time recovery using my backup files. And recovery is very straightforward. I don't have to create a new database instance and uh, run MySQL dumps to read the, the dump files and uh, restore it, uh, insert all the data back logically to the whole entire database. Because MySQL database backup just read the backup files and copy back, okay, that files into particular locations and just start the database. Therefore, it can, you know, recover the database very, very fast compared to MySQL down. All right. MySQL database backup support uh, incremental recovery, uh, in, sorry, incremental backup, so that it will give you um, flexibility in terms of uh, creating a backup strategy that meet your requirements. Uh, recovery point objective, mean time to recover, as well as the uh, uh, size of the backup, uh, backup volume. And once uh, we talk about uh, enterprise database uh, requirements that we need to have like, you know, uh, database redundancies. So MySQL supports uh, asynchronous replications to replicate data from my, one my MySQL database to another MySQL database in maximum performance. Why this maximum performance? Because whenever the transactions come into the source and committed over there, then the commit will immediately happen. The source will execute the commit directly to the storage engine without waiting for the replica to come back. There are two things that happening uh, during the commit points. The first is commit, yeah, committing the transaction, the storage engines, as well as create the uh, bin lock event, yeah, the transaction slot that need to be sent from source to replica. Once the replica is received, then replica will commit that uh, transaction slots to its own storage engine, so that uh, replications will happen in that way. However, uh, these uh, solutions, even though it give uh, best performance, but it won't give you recovery point objective equal to zero. Because commit point happening on source, it won't wait uh, for acknowledgement, acknowledgement happens uh, coming from the replicas. So the source won't, won't know whether the transaction logs has been received uh, by the replica or not. Therefore, we have uh, some asynchronous uh, solutions whereby the commit point will wait the acknowledgements from the replica uh, at, um, you know, until it time outs. So it has time out. Once it is time out, then the masters or source will not wait for any acknowledgement anymore, but it is fall back. It, it will fall back to the uh, asynchronous replications. But once the network is good, network performance is better in any given time. So these replications will provide synchronous replications. Any commit points on the source will wait for acknowledgements at least for one of the replica from one of the replica. However, the solutions will not give you a recovery point objective equal to zero because certain things, let's say, for example, uh, uh, networks uh, have, a, have a problem, for example, or there is no checking mechanisms whether the replica is able to transact 
the transaction slot to the storage engine or not. Therefore, we have another solution, uh, what we call it as MySQL group replications for giving maximum data protections, okay? Uh, with recovery point objective equal to zero. With group replications, any transactions that committed in one of the nodes, it, it won't commit straight away, but it will wait for a participants at least uh, by majority of the nodes saying yes to the transactions, then all nodes will be committed, you know, will, will, will do a commit uh, for that transactions at their own time. These solutions will give uh, good performance. However, you can't expect these solutions will as fast will be as fast as asynchronous replications because there is latencies, there is overhead for group replications to communicate to each other, as well as latencies of waiting for the acknowledgments from other nodes, from other um, uh, group replications members. And if you are looking for uh, companies that are actually using uh, MySQL replication heavily, uh, Facebook is using MySQL and using MySQL replications. Within data center, they are using uh, semi-sync, and of course, data center, they are using asynchronous replications. So that uh, any commit point that happening on the uh, database on one data center, it won't wait for acknowledgments from the other data centers and so on. And this slide or this diagram is actually uh, captured from the uh, uh, one of the technical members of uh, Facebook. Okay, so uh, we have uh, group applications, but we don't have a complete solutions related to the applications. Application does not need to know, I mean, does not know, okay, which uh, database nodes, okay, it needs to connect to. So uh, we have InnoDB clusters to solve the problems. The InnoDB clusters, okay, uh, classify the uh, node member into two kind of nodes, which is are primary nodes and secondary nodes. The primary node is a nodes whereby transactions can happen, where the secondary nodes are read replicas. And we provide uh, cluster metadata so that uh, group replication can have integrations with MySQL routers. And MySQL routers is the database endpoint for user terminals or the applications to connect to MySQL in ODP clusters without knowing about cluster topology. Connecting from the applications to the InnoDB clusters will be the same as applications connecting to standalone MySQL instance because of MySQL routers. From the application standpoint, MySQL routers is the database. And MySQL routers basically exposed to kind of ports, which is 6446 and 6447 for MySQL Classic, uh, 6446 for read write, and 6447 for read only. So. So um, if you are using a document store, okay, uh, MySQL routers also has uh, another two kind of ports, which is 64460 for read write and 64470 for read only. So if the user or applications connecting to MySQL router using read write port, then MySQL routers will redirect the connections uh, to the primary nodes. With doing this, we can provide our customers with uh, solutions that, you know, give them uh, RPO equal to zero, uh, high availability with uh, failovers, yeah, and read scale out. If one of the node fails, then group replication will work to nominate or to promote one of the secondary nodes uh, to be uh, the next primary. I explain here. These three diagrams is basically a single cluster, okay? The diagram on the left is the initial states of this cluster. We have application servers that connected to MySQL router uh, in read, using read-write port and read-only port. And MySQL router is connecting to three nodes of InnoDB clusters. The read-write port will be connected to primary and the read-only port connecting uh, in run-robin fashions to all secondary nodes. So the applications can make decisions uh, let's say it's just doing the simple query and simple transaction, then it can, it needs to connect to the uh, read write ports. But once the primary node fails, the InnoDB clusters will automatically fail over the primary node to one of the nodes, uh, available nodes. 
and the master routers will redirect the read-write connections to the new primary. So the application does not need to know about the changes of the cluster topology. If the fail node uh, comes back, it will auto rejoin back to the clusters as a secondary node, as you see on the screen. And this is the uh, you know uh, typical InnoDB cluster deployment at one side, okay, for simple web applications. You will have internet uh, traffic going in and hitting the firewalls, the perimeter firewalls, and hitting those balancers. And you have you will have like you know multiple web servers, okay, for high availability, and then from web server to application servers. Usually, it has you know web applications firewalls uh, to give layer seven protections, and from the application servers connecting to you know DB clusters on the back end, you will need to have like you know database uh, firewalls. But this firewall is basically uh, to meet the uh, regulatory compliance. Let's say you want to uh, create a, a three-tier architecture between a database tier, application tier, and web tier. And the application servers will need to connect to MySQL routers before hitting the firewalls and, uh, and, and uh, finally hit the uh, you know, DB clusters on the back end. What if you have a multiple site and you want to extend the InnoDB clusters across data centers? We have a solution, what we call it as InnoDB cluster set. The InnoDB cluster set consists of uh, more than one InnoDB clusters. One InnoDB clusters become a primary, and the rest of InnoDB clusters within a single cluster set become replica. So transactions will only happen on the primary nodes of the primary clusters, and it will replicate to the rest of the nodes within the cluster set. First, if the transactions happens on the primary clusters, it comes to the primary nodes, and when commit is happening, the, there will be a certification process to make sure that you know data is consistent and uh, a transaction is valid across the InnoDB clusters nodes within the primary clusters. Then the commit will actually happen. Once the commit happens, then okay, the bin lock event will be sent uh, to the, the rest of the replica clusters using asynchronous replication. And this is managed asynchronous replication within the InnoDB cluster set as a single solution. So it is not uh, created manually. The asynchronous replication is not created manually. So this is the uh, typical InnoDB cluster set deployment at multi-site uh, for simple web application if you want to extend uh, the previous architecture. You will have like DC1 and DC2 and DC1 and running three node InnoDB clusters, and you have InnoDB cluster set with three node InnoDB cluster running on DC2. And there will be asynchronous replications between DC1 and DC2. On top of that, you will have like, you know, GTM or whatever it is. You can even make these solutions as active active, okay? Since MySQL routers will be available on both sides, and MySQL routers will always, by default, connect to primary cluster either primary cluster is running on DC1 or primary cluster is running on DC2. Does not mat doesn't matter because MySQL routers will always find the primary cluster by default so that your applications can run active-active on both sides. Or you can even you know, run, in, run it as an active-passive. Yeah, it's up to you. Uh, using, for example, like DNS, okay, you can route the internet traffic to one of the DC and uh, activate one of the uh, uh, DC as primary and uh, the other one as a secondary data center. And if you want to flip the replication, it's very easy. You just run the cluster dot get cluster set primary cluster and cluster name. Then uh, immediately the replication will be, you know, flip. Okay, and uh, replica cluster become primary cluster, primary cluster become replica cluster. And how about the application and routers? Does not need to change. Okay, it will automatically find the new primary clusters. Very simple, very scalable. And how uh, we know that you know developers like uh, to write you know uh, modern, faster, and lighter applications in this uh, new digital age. Okay, uh, with a lot of uh, deployments on cloud native. Right, this is like a typical hybrid deployments between um, you know applications, microservices application running on Kubernetes with English controllers, okay, uh, for internal traffic, I mean, external traffic to go into the Kubernetes clusters 
before hitting application package and services within Kubernetes clusters. And you have InnoDB clusters outside the uh, the uh, the Kubernetes clusters, and you will have like you know database endpoints uh, in Kubernetes, and you will need to have MySQL routers running as a replica set in in, in the Kubernetes for the applications to connect to InnoDB clusters. Looks nice. But if the InnoDB clusters, let's say, uh, primary not have a problems, there will be a failovers. And please take notes that these failovers may take 14 seconds to two minutes, depending on the applications uh, loads uh, to database. Then uh, during these uh, failovers, all the um, microservices applications, okay, will not be able to connect to database. And there will be a, a you know, total uh, disruptions over here. Uh, just by doing the, uh, you know, failovers of the database. So if you want to improve these situations, you need to bring the InnoDB clusters to Kubernetes and slice the monolithic, your monolithic database into microservices-like database. And each database will be serving its own uh, applications, packages, and services. So, and then uh, you can you can install such InnoDB clusters and you can provide the cluster ID over here so that the replica set, I mean, the uh, MySQL routers in the replica set can connect. So if there is any problems, right, something like this, okay, a couple of pods having issue, and uh, there will be auto failovers because this is primary node and, and the rest are not uh, primary node. Uh, only primary node will trigger the auto failovers. Only part of the application package and services will have issue at certain point in time. Remember, that you know the load is spread across multiple InnoDB clusters, so that the failovers will be faster than you have than if you have a monolithic uh, database on InnoDB cluster. So your database, your overall systems for uh, serving the microservices application will will be more uh, highly available. And managing a uh, multiple InnoDB cluster is not easy. Okay, one InnoDB cluster you can. Uh, install it manually on Kubernetes without any issues. But if you have uh, 10 or 50 microservices, each microservice application has its own InnoDB cluster, then you have problems. Therefore, we come up with the uh, automations. In Kubernetes, any automations related to the operators, and we have MySQL operators to manage and maintain InnoDB clusters on Kubernetes. And we have MySQL operator GA uh, a couple of weeks ago, and you can download, you can test, you can try and deploy MySQL as a InnoDB cluster easily in your Kubernetes, as well as uh, doing a backup, uh, schedule the backup, um, maintain the life cycles of the uh, MySQL InnoDB clusters in Kubernetes uh, automatically using MySQL operators. And this is the uh, architecture of MySQL operators uh, for InnoDB cluster deployment on Kubernetes, as you see over here. I, I don't want to go deep into this. Uh, but basically, uh, it has, you know, capability to do uh, automatic backups, okay, logical backup to uh, OCI object storage, uh, as well as to local storage uh, via PV and PVC and so on. And we base one of the examples, okay, uh, that use MySQL 8.0 uh, running as a containers on Kubernetes surfing the microservice, microservice applications that are running on the same Kubernetes cluster. So uh, we have plenty of use case uh, in Singapore as well, and a couple of companies in the regions, but I could not mention the names to the compliance. But the, this is the, uh, something that we can share because this is public uh, reference that we have. Okay, uh, rest assured that this uh, MySQL InnoDB clusters or MySQL on containers running on Kubernetes is basically is viable solutions and has been running as a productions in uh, many companies and many organizations. And related to data security, data security is very important and we have end-to-end -end data security features uh, start from uh, data in transit, data address, okay, encryptions, audits, uh, transparent data encryptions, integrations with external enterprise authentication and so on, okay, our firewalls as well. So we are able to meet uh, stringent com compliance like PCI DSS, HIPAA, SOX, uh, CIS benchmarks, and so on. Recently, we worked together with DISA. Okay, DISA is part of the, uh, the DOD, uh, Department of Defense of the United States. We come up with some tools, we come up with some standard 
how to deploy MySQL Enterprise Editions 8.0 in very secure manner. And uh, this is MySQL Enterprise Editions uh, Advanced Security. Okay, you don't have to purchase additional, uh, you know, licenses to have the MySQL uh, Enterprise Security running uh, on top of the MySQL Enterprise Editions because everything is built in. So uh, you just need to activate, okay, or deactivate uh, as you need. So it can have the integrations with native LDAPs, okay, so that your password will not store in MySQL, but stores in a lab service. And uh, MySQL will use native, native LDAP plugins to basically authenticate your sessions with the LDAP service. The same thing with uh, uh, Linux PAMs. And with Active Directory, once you log into the domains, then you can get the tick token, right? And you can use these uh, tokens uh, basically to uh, log into MySQL without without uh, password because MySQL will use Windows authentication to authenticate uh, with Microsoft Active Directory and uh, based on token that you have, okay, MySQL will allow you to log in. And recently in 8.0.27, we can have combinations between password and external authentications using multi-factor authentication. Let's say you not very comfortable with the uh, uh, automatic login, once the user login domains, then you can combine that with the password and so on. So it's very, very secure. Uh, in terms of MySQL encryptions, yeah, enterprise encryptions, we have uh, plenty of the as encryptions function, data encryption function that the application developers can easily use, okay, to encrypt um, in the, uh, from the applications, let's say, uh, and uh, for for people that log in directly without using applications and does not know about the encryption keys, does not know about the function that used to uh, encrypt the data, then you know the uh, data will will be encrypted something like this. Uh, it won't uh, come up as a plain text. However, if the company, I mean, if the persons uh, use the enterprise uh, decryptions or example decryption functions in enterprise encryptions, then uh, you know the data will will be appear will be shown. So uh, the other one is transparent data encryption. Transparent data encryptions, we have, you know, end-to-end, um, -end like, you know, um, to encrypt anything that MySQL write into the disk, start for bin logs, um, yeah, and then uh, data dictionary double space, MySQL system double space, of course, user double space, double write path for everything, basically. So uh, to give you examples, uh, what is TD all about? So with TDE, as you see over here, if I'm a system administrator, I have access to the servers, but I don't have access to the database. Then actually, uh, without TDE, I can I can get the data in clear text. However, with TDE, okay, every um, you know write that MySQL does yeah, to the storage engines and finally to the storage, uh, it will be encrypted, as you see there. The firewall is simple, okay, either you're blocking or you lock, yeah? So uh, firewall will base on the allow list. Allow list is basically um, memory tables, okay, that consists of all allowable SQL statements for that particular user or that particular group of users. So if the SQL statements in digested forms or normalized forms is matched with the allow list, then SQL will get executed or get locked is depending on uh, firewall, uh, you know, mode that, you know, you put, uh, you configure. So by doing this, basically, um, it will uh, prevent database from SQL injection attacks uh, start from the beginning, start from database itself, as well as uh, protect the data uh, from insiders uh, attack, yeah? uh, connect that database directly and then uh, do some query and so on. Okay, it won't happen because uh, only uh, certain SQL statements will be executed by the firewall. I mean, by the MySQL. And the rest of the SQL statement will be blocked. MySQL Enterprise Audit will audit, will track, will lock all the activities that, you know, uh, you know uh, included in the audit policies. You can create the fine-grained auditing, yeah, audit policies. And uh, you can assign this audit policy to particular users. And then once the user log in any activities that you know need to be audited, it will log into the audit log. And uh, we have uh, JSON formats, okay, 
and we have comparisons and encryption as well to make sure that audit logs is well protected. And one thing that's unique with our enterprise audit is even you can create an actions with the audit. Let's say you want to have like, you know, audit policies that block people to do accessing certain stables or certain fields, for example. You can do that basically. So the audit itself can be used for firewalls, but works differently with the firewall. Firewalls is like, I don't trust anyone except, you know, this SQL, this SQL, this SQL. Well, enterprise audit, if someone uh, that has particular uh, audit policies and the action of audit policy is blocked and or abort, yeah, and they're doing something that, you know, need to be audited then it will, it will pop. So the, even though the system administrator or database administrator will not be able to access certain tables because it's getting audited and the action is support. So yeah, that kind of thing. So uh, it has the, uh, like I said, uh, we can encrypt the audit logs. Uh, we can also uh, use this method basically to decrypt the audit. So the audit logs will be uh, well protected. And we also have, you know, audit log file pruning to maintain the size of audit logs. If you use a JSON format, then you can use, uh, you know, audit log file pruning to maintain the size of audit logs. So uh, we also have data masking and identifications, okay, using view, for example, so, uh, that's, so that the applications, application servers uh, that connected to the database, okay, you access the, mas the masking data while the authorized users can log in directly to the database and they can easily you know, get the uh, query from the base table. But this authorized user is some, someone who actually uh, need to access their data. <laughs> okay, so if the system administrator is going in and then you know, wants to access the employee table, for example, and we don't want this system admin to get the data, then we can use MySQL Enterprise Audit uh, with, uh, with action equal to abort so that the, uh, you know, the system admin will not be able to get the data. And data masking basically will, you know, uh, do the, uh, will mask the data. Uh, we have mask bands, we have uh, mask inner, mask outers, or dictionary based uh, masking and so on. And last but not least, uh, we have a complete solutions, okay, uh, start uh, from on prems, on cloud, hybrid clouds, uh, even for uh, in a cloud native. Uh, MySQL can be used for OLTP workload, OLAP, and machine learning workload, and so on. And it is highly available and very secure. And uh, it will bring uh, MySQL database, okay, um, you know, you can use MySQL database and innovate using MySQL database. And like I, like this, the titles of this uh, page, yeah, borderless innovations where impossibility is the limit. And you can use MySQL. Uh, in 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 in, in, in workloads uh, in any workloads that you know uh, for your application. Thank you. I think that's that's all from my side. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you so much, Anantu and Yuan. Um, you know for those insights. Um, we are running a little tight on the schedule, but I'll quickly, you know, get Lakshman on board and I'll request him to, um, you know, share his insights with us. Hi, Lakshman. Thank you, Shirley. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, today in this open session. Can I have the next slide, please? Uh, so uh, I would like to brief you about the MySQL database offerings Path Infotech provides on cloud as well as on premises environments. So I will start with the consulting services uh, wherein that customer is looking to enhance that MySQL database functionalities or, in, or wants to install a new environments or maybe would like to have an existing database auditing against the best practices. So we start this engagement with having our discussions with the customer to get more details about the requirements and to understand their existing environments. Based on that, we do an assessment report and then submit to the customer. We do have a discussion on the assessment reports accordingly, uh, 
have to have the feedback and the approvals from the customer to go further for any kind of implementation and improvements implementations. So, so new implementation services, uh, wherein the customer has a need to install a new uh, MySQL database setup according to the business need uh, and requirements. We start with understanding of business requirement. Based on that, we propose uh, solutions to the customer. And according to the requirement and, and approvals, we do an implementation of it. The implementation could be a uh, very simple, uh, could be uh, just standalone database installations, could be high availability uh, installation like uh, MySQL iNode. Would like to have that maybe the MySQL router in front of applications to have auto failovers, to have minimum or minimizing or without ha not having any kind of a downtime for the front end applications. Disaster recovery site setups, uh, that is as a need of in case of any kind of a disasters so that they can actually use that. Uh, then there is a security implementations on the basis of the requirements. It can actually go for the auditing, uh, could be a TDD, TD, uh, maybe a firewall implementations. So those, those can also be implemented on existing or the new environment. Uh, backup setup as per the database size or the requirements, wherein that we discuss with the customer, we define a pro policy for it and implement the same. We do a validation of that backup as well and document it as per the last final validation. Upgrade and migration uh, services, wherein that customer is looking to uh, upgrade their existing databases or would like to have some kind of a migration, could be a cross-platform migration, uh, maybe uh, migrating to the cloud from on-prem, right? So those kind of uh, uh, environments, uh, we just discuss with the customer and get the requirement. Based, based on that, we prepare a plan, get an approved, and do an implementation of that. Post implementation, we, we give them a go live support as well. Maintenance support, wherein that the customer already has an environment uh, MySQL running in, but they are looking for uh, a partner who can maintain and manage their database as well uh, so that uh, they can actually uh, look for other requirements and uh, focus on the core uh, requirements. So we do offer 24-7 uh, support, uh, wherein that we do monitor proactively all the databases, take action, uh, the active actions according to the findings. And probably if let's say there is something, we actually reach out to the customer, get an approval and implement the solution for it. The second model is the requirement-based support, wherein customer uh, would like to raise a call with us. We actually understand the problem. We go back to the to the environment, log into that, find out the issue, right, and give them a solution according to, right. So that is where, within those all the models, we do actually offer and maintain all the other uh, requirements. Probably with uh, uh, the the company has could be like uh, audit management, like the data what auditing is there at the MySQL side that can be managed, security management, patch management, log and backup management. Uh, sometime it happens that uh, system is running, but there is a performance issues wherein that customer can uh, even if we have been looking for a proactive monitoring, we actually can go and suggest that there is some issue and we can uh, give them a, uh, the recommendations or the solution for it. But the customer can also engage us for any kind of a performance issues they have been facing in their existing environments. So these are the path offerings. Uh, can I have a next slide, please? Can I have a next slide, please? Yeah. So I, I have picked up recent case studies to share with you all. Uh, one is from on-premises, uh, the another is from on-cloud. Uh, so the, the first case study is from public healthcare sector uh, from Singapore. Uh, basically, the requirement or challenges were to have that high uptime for the business because uh, business cannot have a, any kind of a, or afford any kind of a downtime. They do, they do have a multiple uh, MySQL databases, so they were actually looking for the consolidations and, and to manage them all together uh, efficiently. They do have a limited capacity and uh, or capability in the in-house team, so they would like to have someone to do those or implement uh, to to solutions the, those all the requirements and do an implementation on. 
So according to the challenges or the requirements customer has shared, we prepare a solution shared with him and get it approved as MySQL standalone uh, installations, having a DR site, master master replications to address their high uptime for business requirements. And then we did actually implement that patch implementations and uh, patch uh, management and security implementations for addressing their uh, security. Thereafter, we have uh, on-site uh, or off-site support, 24 cost 7 support by certified engineers. What exactly benefits customer has after having it? So they would got actually uh, uh, solutions and address their high uptime uh, requirements. They got a proactive uh, monitoring for the environment to reduce any kind of uh, uh, issues. And then uh, they have a 24 by 7 uh, support by the uh, certified engineers. Can I have a next slide, please? OK, so uh, the second uh, case study is from uh, uh, electronic payment service provider from Singapore. Uh, they had some uh, requirements and uh, challenges as well. Uh, they, the kind of solution they were looking for was coming up with the high capex. So that was the biggest worry for them. Uh, high uptime for the business because multiple business has to access the same uh, set of uh, data. Uh, managing the peak load wherein that they have a certain time period in a month wherein that load is very high and rest of the month there is not much load and proactive monitoring and management of their environments. So according to the requirement and uh, uh, the understanding and the discussion with the customer, we have proposed them MySQL iNode cluster setup over the cloud to address their high capex and high uptime uh, requirements and then managing the peak load as well. Then database was uh, database uh, security and the enhan enhancement was uh, for them uh, for the backup policy and, and, and for the auditing as well. They did have the MySQL router uh, in front of the application so that the application can uh, have an auto failover uh, on the existing and available node in case of any issue with the particular uh, node. So what exactly the customer uh, get as a benefit from this? Uh, they got the efficient cost reduction, uh, having it on cloud, uh, OPEX and uh, instead of the CAPEX, and proactive health check and monitoring to reduce the issues by certified engineers. Can I have the uh, next slide, please? Ash earlier has mentioned that uh, there is a raffle draw at the end of this uh, session. So I would like to uh, brief you about the what exactly the winners will have. Uh, can I have it? So what exactly the winner will have is a, a, a discovery session with us, uh, which will actually have the systematic free of cost health check on existing MySQL services that actually will include the uh, uh, information gathering, background environment understanding, right? Wherein we will actually understand those all the information related to the what kind of a setup, what are the issues or anything which is related to the uh, the their existing environments. Fact finding uh, session based on what uh, some of the QA sessions with their their the 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 engineers they have been actually maintaining this site, or maybe the application teams they probably having some kind of a, a pain areas. So that we actually find out with that, then we'll have that MySQL cell plugin if they have been running that My Oracle MySQL versions. Uh, we can actually collect that log, includes the MySQL database logs, system logs, application logs. And over that, whatever we will actually get or, or I mean, bring out from the systems, based on that, we will do a system uh, study analysis. Uh, that all the material we will have, we will review it. And, and after study, we will try to find out the potential improvements and what are the new things which actually can customer has to improve that environment, availability or security. Based on the system uh, study or the information gathered study analysis, we will be preparing a report uh, and we'll share with the customer as well. That reports will include the fact findings, uh, what the observation we have, and what are the recommendations to improve or implement the new things? Uh, that discovery session will take up to a week time. Uh, that is what the, the raffle winner will get with us as free of cost. Now I would like to request uh, Shirley to announce the raffle winners. Thank you so much.
Thank you so much, Lakshman. And once again, thanks to Hanantu as well as Yvonne for such an insightful and you know engaging session. I'm now gonna take a quick uh, you know pause just to pick up the names. Please bear with me. Okay, so I have my first name coming in. Uh, I've got Nikki Ko from Containers Printers. Congratulations, Nikki. You're our first winner for the evening. Okay, I've got a second name coming in. Yeah, I have, uh, okay, this is Janani Jayakumar from SSG. Hey, Janani, congratulations. OK, I have a third name coming in. My final name out here is, yeah, I've got Max Lowe from Swiss Precisions. Congratulations to you, Max. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, we will be contacting each and every one of you one on one, uh, you know, with details uh, of the discovery session and how you know we'll be initiating the uh, engagement across. Now I'm going to quickly now go ahead uh, for the question and answers. Uh, just a reminder to everybody: please be sure to type your questions in the question box. Uh, this will be on your control panels. Okay, I see a couple of questions coming in. Let me pick up the first one that we've got with us. Okay, so I have my first question coming in from Charles. Uh, Charles is asking, can I use Heatwave with my on-premise MySQL database? Can I have one of my speakers if you would like to, you know, take this up right now? I try to answer. Yes, please. Yeah. So MySQL Heatwave is only available in the cloud. So if you have uh, MySQL on-prem, then you can replicate the data from your MySQL on-prem to Heatwave on cloud, so that you can run your excessive Every query works plus machine learning uh, workloads uh, using Heatwave. Okay, thank you so much, Anantu. I hope, Charles, that answers your question. Um, I have one more question that is coming in from Josephine. Uh, okay, this is. In what scenario I should use heat wave uh, instead of autonomous DB? Okay, so uh, autonomous DB is based on Oracle database. If your application is particularly built, uh, use Oracle database then use uh, Oracle autonomous DB. But if you have uh, like you know uh, common applications with uh, maybe. You are you have a tendency to use open source systems, then uh, MySQL Heatwave is based on MySQL, and it can do um, you know some sort of the uh, machine learning as well as the uh, you know all app analytics as well. And and you can you can actually connect your OLTP applications to the MySQL Heatwave as well. By doing that, okay, you have uh, centralized database systems for all of your workloads, uh, start from OLTP, all app and machine learning. And uh, you don't have to use ETLs because data is already inside. And data in the MySQL Heatwave will be kept on the InnoDB and as well as on Heatwave clusters. So if the data is uh, residing on the Heatwave clusters, then your query will be executed on Heatwave clusters with extreme performance in memory. While uh, for uh, transactions, okay, when you commit the data, you will come uh, from your LTP applications, it will go to the InnoDB and commit of there. Internally, the data will be synchronized or offload okay, from InnoDB storage engine to the backend with the clusters. So um, 
come back to the questions, okay, uh, in what scenario you use a MySQL heat wave? If you have, okay, general workloads that running for WellTV or labs as well as machine learning, and you are using MySQL on frames, or you're using some sort of uh, open source uh, systems, then uh, MySQL heat wave is uh, suitable. Thank you so much, Anantu. Um, Josephine, I hope that actually answers your question. I've the, got the next one coming in from Ananya. Um, OK, this is, are there tools to migrate from MySQL on other clouds to Oracle Cloud? Yes, definitely. Uh, we have uh, tools, what we call it as MySQL shells. OK, the MySQL shells basically will be able to migrate uh, your data. Okay, uh, from other cloud uh, to MySQL uh, HeatWave on OCI. Uh, just run MySQL shells and then uh, back up your, you know, database on other cloud providers that are running on your other uh, cloud providers to the object storage in OCI. Then use the MySQL shell as well to actually restore from the object storage uh, to the MySQL HeatWave on OCI. Uh, to <clears throat> minimize the downtime, um, during the backups, actually, we keep the uh, informations about the uh, log positions or GTIDs information as well, uh, so that uh, once the data database is get restored completely on MySQL HeatWave, then you can create, uh, you know, inbound replications from other cloud providers into the MySQL HeatWave on OCI, so that the Delta transactions will get synchronized. Uh, once it is synchronized, then you just do the cutoff first, just, you know, uh, I mean, the commissions, the, you know, uh, database that running on other cloud providers and, you know, connect your applications to the MySQL hit with Mono CI. So basically, the tools is uh, MySQL shell. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Anandu. Ananya, I hope that answers your question. Um, so, guys, this is all the time we've got, uh, you know, take up all the questions. Uh, we'll try and address all the remaining ones one on one, uh, you know, on email with you post this webinar. Uh, of course, if you have any other questions, any business challenges that you would want to share with us or would you want to inquire about, please feel free to reach out to us uh, on the email ID that's in front of you right now. It's uh, reach us at pathinfotech.com. Uh, we've got a small survey that's going to come up on your screens post, you know, closing this webinar. I will again request everybody if you can just take a minute or so to respond to the survey that we've got. Uh, we'll really appreciate all your answers. Um, with that, uh, you know, I'll end this webinar. Thank you, everyone, for joining in, taking the time out of your busy sh schedules and, you know, giving us uh, this moment. And I appreciate all of you for being here. I'll thank all my speakers out here, too. Thank you, Hanantu, Yvonne, and Lakshman for such an exciting and engaging session for us today. Uh, we'll be sharing the recording of this webinar with all of you very soon. Uh, so keep a watch for our emails coming to your inbox. Thank you, guys. Thank you once again. And a very good day to all of you. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you guys.